hey guys welcome back to another weird wednesday i'm asher's and this is pat o'sullivan how goes it pat i heard it's cold there yeah do you, you guys don't have snow uh we've been having a little bit of snow but we, we've been having a little ice we've been having these ice storms these vicious uh storms well we're gonna have your probably what is currently your snow tomorrow so <laughs> yeah we have it's been snowing for like two days straight here in chicago which is uh you know i was born in the midwest i'm not from right. fucking arizona or like some people um <laughs> so, so i'm i'm used to i'm used to this like as, as much as it's like a pain and you're like oh fuck um at the same time like this is who we are this is what we're used to this is what we were born yeah. into you know what i mean uh not to be all bane about it i but don't know like, man that's you what know. you say you say you're used to it and i've fucking been in the midwest my whole life and i hate it i am not a fan at all of the snow i will not I like the house if i don't have to i'm scared to drive in it i'm scared to walk in it i don't like it <laughs> yeah i um i had to do a lot of driving in it this morning it's it's not fun it's it's definitely not fun and it's it's definitely like cool when you when you have the option to stay in and not have to go outside and all you got to do is like look outside and be like oh look at that right. um, it's what, nice what, when you don't have to go anywhere <laughs> right when you're forced to do shit and it's a completely different ball game but um what in, in my early 20s when i was in a uh punk rock band uh i repoed cars uh on the side when i wasn't when i wasn't playing and, and playing shows and um i repoed cars in this type of weather so it's like you know it, it, if you're driving your own car in this type of weather like that's not too bad but if you're driving a stolen car that you're not sure if the brakes work or if there's gas in the tank or when the last time this motherfucker had an oil change you know that's that's different <laughs> you know yeah. so i i've i'm used to like driving in this under all different types of conditions i used to deliver pizzas too so like driving in shitty weather is um i have tons of experience with it i don't like it any more than anyone else but yeah. you know sometimes you got to get from point a to point b you yeah know. unfortunately you're right about what that. are you gonna do ashers what are you gonna do Damn, you true how much a weekend did you do anything exciting what did i do um yeah i had um i was disappointed there was no po post inauguration societal collapse you know last episode we 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 talked about q we and we kind yeah. of yeah what was gonna happen and not a fucking thing and that seemed to quiet uh about 85 percent of uh the people on my social media feed that's good that subscribed to that um you know way of thinking but there's still that 15 percent that's holding on <laughs> so, yeah right I, i'm still seeing a bunch of people they're like oh storm it's coming still and it's like mm. <laughs> yeah i think your meteorologist lied to you <laughs> right it's so it's um i did watch palm springs I watched a couple of movies this weekend. Palm Springs was probably the the better of the two. I don't know if you're familiar with it. It's with Andy Samberg and um, J.K. Uh, not J.K. Rowling's the dude that played J. Jonah Jameson. You know, he's in Drumline. You know what I'm talking about? No. He, he was on Ozzy shitting with the one dude's mouth. Oh yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Exactly. There we go. Okay. Had to had to remember my audience here for a second. Yeah. Uh, yeah so it's it's basically it's like i didn't know this but um it, so it had made a bunch of people that i follow on social media it had it made their like paltry like top 20 top movies of 2020 right because there's not a fucking long, lot of movies that came out but uh palm springs did pop up on a bunch of lists and i was able to catch it for free on hulu this weekend and it was very good and i won't give it away but it's it's got uh it's kind of a science fiction movie uh very much a comedy but very very good and I, I can't recommend that enough. Also watched the Valley Girl remake, um, which I, you're probably too young to remember the original with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, I, I don't. I've never seen Valley Girl. Okay, well, it's a musical. I like musicals. I like musicals. It's not that I don't like them. I just never heard of it. So, <laughs> what is your favorite? What is your favorite musical? My favorite musical, uh, Little Shop of Horrors. Oh, that's right. We've talked about that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because you don't necessarily. Oh, yes, because we uh, we don't dislike Rocky Horror, but uh, not Rocky. Is it Rocky Horror? Yeah, Rocky Horror. But Little Shop of Horrors, you're more of a fan of. Very cool. Yeah, right. No, I like Rocky Horror. Yeah, but definitely Little Shop is is way better. 
that's that's so. the best one so <laughs> you know so obviously you know i got my i got my tastes um you know the first one i i saw admittedly you know well aside from you know being a kid i you know i love the you know the disney sing-alongs and stuff but um you know being an adult the first one i saw well i guess i was still a kid i was a teenager it was rent and oh yeah you know and that's a, a great it's great you know i was like oh this is amazing so and i saw rent it wasn't i wasn't broadway rent but i saw rent it live but not the movie the movie had come out but i hadn't seen it and like one of my friends was like oh well they're coming to the you know they're they're doing a performance here do you want to go and i'm like oh yeah absolutely so we went and saw it um some theater around here and i was like wow this is really good you know and it was and then i watched the movie and i was like oh i think i like musicals <laughs> And so, you know, but Little Shop of Horrors has always been my, you know, since I was a kid, that's been one of my movies that I've just, I've always loved. So I don't know, but no, I like them. I don't have any, any issues. With yeah. Them. I saw, I saw Rent back in, I think like 94, 95, my, yeah. uh, my mom took me and, uh, we went with one of her friends and his, and her son who was my age and um all, all my mom kind of knew all the parents kind of knew about it was it was like cultural phenomenon that was big, like huge in chicago like joseph and the amazing technicolor dream coat with donny osmond had just done like an eight-year run and then ended and then rent came in and that was like the next big like you yeah. know because we we have a lot of theater here yeah. you know it's not broadway or anything but like chicago's got like some decent shit so yeah so they <laughs> we went to rent and uh I don't know if you're familiar with Team America World Police. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> when they parody it in the yeah. beginning with yeah. everybody has AIDS on. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I thought it was good. It was definitely like, um, you know, I don't think it, it wasn't the cultural touchstone for me that it was for some other people. Yeah. Um, well, uh, that's but, understandable, you know. I, yeah. You know, if you don't have AIDS or, you know, whatever. <laughs> But yeah, no, Rent, and then I saw, um, you know, after that, the next one that I, I, I really got into was, um, of course, Repo, the genetic opera, um, which is, I, I think I still it's- still haven't seen that. Oh my God, you haven't seen that? <laughs> What's no. What's wrong with you? It's got Bill Mosley in it. <laughs> because there's a better movie called Repo Man, and I hate that no. people can, confer- first of all, we already talked about the fact that I was a Repo Man, so I'm somewhat of an authority on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> Repo Man with Emilio Estevez is an infinitely better, and I haven't even seen the genetic opera one with right. Jude Law. Well, you don't know, Pat. You but I don't need to know. I know there's no fucking way that it holds a candle to oh, the, Emilio, the, the, the Emilio Estevez Repo Man movie is no bullshit. Probably, if it's not my favorite movie of all time, it's the top three. And I'm one of those people that throws around, oh, it's my favorite movie of all time, because I love fucking movies, right? So it's really hard for me to pick one. But if I had to say, like, okay, what's in your top three? Repo Man by Alex Cox, Emilio Estevez, definitely in there it is the perfect hybrid of science fiction comedy apocalypse shit conspiracy shit alien shit it's it's, it's, good. Punk it's a rock good shit. movie it's a good movie but does jude law sing in in the genetic opera yeah i think everybody is it jude law in that i don't think jude law's in that at all no i don't think so oh. let me see <laughs> i gotta look into i don't think so. maybe he is yeah, isn't it him in uh, Repo the Genetic Opera? Oh, Anthony Head. Wow, it's the Giles from. Uh, yes. From, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. Buffy. Yeah. Right. No. Yeah. Jude Law's not in. And Paris Hilton's in it. Yeah, I guess I'll check it out sometime. It's what am good. I thinking? The music is fucking great. It's got fucking ogre from Skinny Puppy in it. You know what? There was another Repo Man. I think it was Repo Man. Repo Man, yeah. With Jude Law and Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, okay, that's, that's, that's what I'm thinking of. No. That came out two years later. And I, oh, and I, no, Repo the Genetic Opera. All right, I'll check this out. Check it out. You, Pat, you check it out. You're going to come back next week and tell everybody how wonderful it is and how it changed your life. <laughs> have you have you seen Repo Man with the Emilio Estevez? I have. Yeah, it is a good movie. Okay. All right. All right. Damn. I, have, yeah. I can't. I can't give you homework done. All right. We'll go rewatch that. <laughs> go watch <laughs> tell that me movie. how awesome it is. <laughs> oh, no, I'll do that. I'll finish uh, Fire in the Sky. 
And <laughs> oh, you still haven't finished that? <laughs> I so I did I I did I guess I watched the alien parts and then after that was done I was like okay I turn it off. <laughs> what well what'd you think? What'd you think of the alien parts at least? Oh. Effective, I mean, right? I don't know. I mean, no, not really. It just it, it didn't do it for me. I liked the alien spacesuit things. Those were cool. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, I like that as like an explanation for like, you know, why we see these grays with these big eyes or whatever. Um, because these ones had teeny tiny eyes. But, you know, none right. of that was accurate to the account. So it was weird. You know, it didn't. It was weird. <laughs> you didn't, but you didn't think that like the experimentation part was like real brutal and like kind of scary. It was just it was so short. I mean, there was nothing really to it. So. You know, I felt like, uh, you know, I I definitely wanted to see him get poked in the eye, and we didn't. So that was really disappointing to me. I I remember as a kid, what what horrified me the most about that sequence was at the very beginning when he wakes up in the little like uh, the bed things. Yeah, yeah, and he um he pushes himself out, and he's floating around, and at one point he kind of goes spiraling, and he crashes into another bed thing. And there's somebody in there that's dead. Yeah, it's like a dead guy and is all like eviscerated. And like, <laughs> yeah. And I remember thinking, who the fuck is that? Like, right. <laughs> right that that freaked story. me out. <laughs> yeah. Was like, this is somebody that never came back. Yeah. And that, was, yeah. That was like, that was, I think, what kind of psychologically um, really terrified me about the whole alien abduction thing as a kid was this idea that. If you were lucky, you came back and you had these horrible memories and you were traumatized. Yeah. But whether or not you came back or not was solely at their discretion. And you really had no way. You had no bargaining with them. You had no like. The, these beings were like so like powerful. Like You know what I mean? Like they, they just did what they want with you and right. they could take you and they could bring you back or they could torture you or they could do all this crazy shit. And it would be the most horrifying experience of your life. And you would have to remember it, right? Like, what you know, happened? Would, like, oh, they, why did he die? Like, did they just push it too far? You know, was I'm he curious. left there for too long? Yeah, because he was kind of like already like <laughs> rotting or something. I don't he, know. Well, he's like, but he was like cut open, so it's like, did they cut him open? Maybe after and they did like an autopsy. I don't, I don't know, know if he I was just, cut I, open, or I don't know if if the impact of Travis going into that thing. I thought he just like kind of like 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 a spoiled grapefruit or a uh, spoiled watermelon. How you maybe. would just kind of yeah but maybe he was cut open i don't know either way it's fucking that that was that was the most like uh, i just believe that at this point especially because i had told so many people that i hadn't seen fire in the sky and then everybody's like oh my god it's so terrifying you have to watch it the hype was was too built up for me to to really get into it you know and it's it wasn't a bad scene the effects were good um i i just like i said i know that it's not and and travis has always said that it's not an accurate depiction of of you know what happened and 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 i know that going in and and so that was the whole reason for me even watching it was because i was doing research on this dude so you know but it was i mean the whole movie the rest of the movie uh, it sucks just find the alien clip on youtube and watch it because right <laughs> <laughs> which i guarantee you you can because me and my friends like to text each other that video at like eleven thirty at night just to fuck with each other <laughs> So like you get a text message and you're like, oh, what's this? And you open it up and you watch and you're like, this motherfucker. Um, have you ever seen Communion? No. Communion, I would I would recommend um, before to any of our listeners too. Fire in the Sky, okay movie. That ten minute abduction scene, either you like it or you don't. But as a as a film altogether, Communion with Christopher Walken is a better movie it came out in uh the late 80s um and it's based on a book by whitley streber who is definitely fucking cia and i don't trust anything that he says but as far as um and like an hollywood mainstream quote-unquote alien abduction movie um check that out because there's there's more than one 10 minute sequence it's a very unsettling scary movie it there's scares throughout it there's multiple abductions they they kind of philosophize a little bit about what these things are, and I kind of agree with what the the conclusions that they draw. Um, but it's it's definitely worth checking out, and it's it's based on a book. Uh, Whitley Strieber was a. If you want to talk about people with problematic backstories? Whitley Strieber was a failed science fiction novelist. He wrote uh, like werewolf books, oh. <laughs> and one of them I don't know not not Howling. 
but Wolfen, I don't know if you've ever seen that movie. Uh-uh, no, I have uh, not. <laughs> it, it was like, it, it, it wasn't as good as The Howling, but it came out around the same time. And it was based on a werewolf book that he wrote. But he was a, a struggling horror science fiction novelist, kind of like a, a D-list Stephen King. And um, suddenly in the 80s became uh, an abductee and started writing books about that and found a lot more money in the new age market than he ever did in the... Uh, the fiction wow. realm so yeah Sometimes and now he's switch it up and make sure that you <laughs> yeah. you know you gotta you gotta figure out what you're good at now i um yeah i i just how I, was your weekend I, oh my weekend was it was it was pretty it was good it's pretty exciting actually I've, I've had a lot of stuff happen last week um not everything i can share but some things i can share um uh, so I, well, for one, I got to sleep with somebody that I have been trying to sleep with now for over a decade. <laughs> okay. And so. Is it Jude Law? Yes, it was. Actually. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it was, I won't say who it is, but um, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that finally happened. Um, and Well, walk me through that. I mean, how is that? That's, that's a long, I it, mean. Yes. I, I've had a couple of those in my life, and they're they're very rewarding. So he doesn't um, listen to the show, okay? So I, okay. I can say that much. So um, him and I were um, kind of dating. He's somebody that I went to high school with, but he was always, like, uh, when I was a freshman, he was a senior. So he left before we ever really talked. However, you know, we kind of had the same group of friends, and um, so we didn't really keep in touch, didn't really know each other that much until uh, a couple years you know later like when i was probably a senior and uh, anyway so we started like hanging out and a lot we were kind of dating and this guy is like really well known for like being a big man whore and like one of my high school friends was like super obsessed with this guy like super obsessed with him and um what kind of dude was he uh he's just some metalhead well not really a metalhead i mean he's, he's he's like a goth i mean he looks like he belongs in like fucking demu brigier or some shit you know he looks like he's a big he's a big metal dude i don't know so um he has actually he plays in a in a metal band called well of night so it's you know um so anyway that's getting googled keep talking (laughs) so so him and i start dating but like he wouldn't really like sleep with me because well because he actually he kind of liked me and i was like oh okay and um but then i like like while i'm like dating him i'm still like kind of seeing other people because we weren't like official or anything um then i i met my husband and i got married to my husband within a month of him and i dating so <laughs> like as nuts as that sounds listen guys one day i will tell you about my life i promise um but <laughs> for the sake of the story so i get married and the guy the other guy was very sad about this it really hurt his feelings and he was like telling everybody in the friend group how much it hurt his feelings and blah, blah, you know because he really liked me and whatever and then like six months later he ends up married to some lady so we kind of run into each other here and there you know just amongst parties and things like that life kind of got weird so then him and his wife like split up and uh this was probably about two years ago and then so him and i kind of start dating again and um but then he like immediately jumps into this relationship with somebody else and i was like oh okay well him and her just broke up like on on halloween i think (laughs) so (laughs) and so i'm like yes it's gonna happen and so you know finally it's it's happened and you know it was it was it was it was good it wasn't great but it was good you know it was i was satisfied but um you know i i don't think i'm interested just because of the kind of person he is nowadays i don't think i'm interested in sleeping with him again um uh, but i'm glad that what I do you mean when you say kind of person he's he's really he's really bad on drugs <laughs> and <laughs> what kind uh all the drugs uh, well no no what's what's like all the drugs out there he's on meth he's on heroin he was a he was a pharmacist up until two months ago when he got caught stealing dilaudid <laughs> what's dilaudid dilaudid is like it's morphine i believe damn it's a painkiller he's on bad, so he's on the I, bad I, i'm on i'm on their the well of night uh facebook page right now and there's a picture their most recent promo shot <laughs> And I, there's there, there's no way for me to accurately communicate like which one of these guys I'm talking about and you're talking about. So we're gonna do like 
like what's that game where you have the faces up and and you ask like are they wearing a hat and then you like you go no you know what <laughs> i'm talking it, about what's that game guess the, who is it the guess profile who? picture no oh. so yes so we're gonna play guess who right now okay. and we're gonna there's these four gentlemen we're gonna try to figure out which one yeah the, you, pro, yeah, the profile uh, picture i'll look at that the, which one you cleaved flesh with okay okay so <laughs> did he have long hair <laughs> yes okay <laughs> that, doesn't, okay that doesn't give you anything but yes <laughs> yeah, no because there's one guy that doesn't okay right? that's, so now, you're right okay now we know it's now we know it's one of these three was he wearing sunglasses at the time <laughs> at the time that we slept together <laughs> yes i i don't know if these glasses come off i don't know if they're uh, that's, that's decorative or no they might be no, prescription no. okay no. um so he, he had long hair did he have a beard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> was he wearing man rings? Oh, was he wearing man rings? Uh, I don't see anybody that's wearing man rings in the picture. Oh, no. Are you looking at the picture right now? Yeah. Is it the dude all the way on the left? Yeah. Oh, that's what I figured. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I could spot them. <laughs> they have a they have a certain look to them, don't they? Yeah, they so. do. Right, they all look the same. Right, exactly. I mean, right. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't. We don't need to go through my garbage, but I shouldn't say garbage. That's a terrible way to refer to the women that were kindly enough to sleep with me. Um, but yes, I mine usually have a common. There's through lines. We'll just, we'll just put it like that. <laughs> He's not very cute in that picture. I will say that. Oh, that stop picture? it! Stop backing away from it. You did what you did. No, it's there's fine. Way better pictures of him. Um, he does not look anything like that now. Uh, he looks ten years older. He's fucking probably t- gosh, a hundred pounds lighter. Believe it or not, he's not even fat in that picture. Um, but anyway, so that happened, and that was you know. But I did it. I feel I feel good that I did it. You know, it's it's over. And then and yeah. then you went to my sister's gender reveal party Sunday. She's having a boy. And oh, cool yeah and then i went back home um i have gotten several contacts um in regards to the mothman and oh all right what i'm finding out is that there are people that um are actively seeing the mothman right now in kentucky and um they're seeing him it i mean as cliche and weird as it is they're seeing him at the bridge that connects kentucky to ohio Mm. so that's i think it's called the lincoln bridge maybe it's called something else i don't know um but yeah so that's been interesting kentucky's been on our radar for a while to have to go down there but not because not because of the mothman so now it's like well now we have to go um so that's been fun. right and this is like a, this is this is an active flap right now yes right? within the last two months there's been a sighting of the mothman down there so <laughs> so what's gas up the car well now i'm scared to cross the bridge pat i mean <laughs> well I, how how big of a bridge is it how long is it you know like how what, what big of a how big of a body of water does it traverse it's the ohio river yeah <laughs> it's, it's pretty large <laughs> okay well. but it's still but so what it is is it like really that's right at the point of point you know there is a point of point pleasant it's where all the all the traders came in from the ohio river because all those three states all meet up right there and so but instead of being on the west virginia side it's on the kentucky side right so it's not you know but it's it's all right there basically in the same area so that's really interesting like i found that I found that really, really telling, but there's been a couple, like four, like four sightings within like the last six months, one of which has been within the last two months. So those are, I mean, that's an active situation there. So I'm going to jump down that rabbit hole. And here I thought I would be allowed to kind of take a Mothman break during the winter, but I guess not. I guess it's not in my card, so. <laughs> no such luck. You know, that... That was like, I think last episode I was talking about how uh, trying to figure out what I'm going to do for 2021 and uh-huh. line up different projects and stuff like that. And I think what I what I finally decided on was not to and just kind of like leave myself open to say yes to things and, and not try to make the rain. 
right? Yeah, Not you don't always have to be the rainmaker. You don't always have to be the instigator. People like us, trust me, like you know just as well as I do, we make shit happen, right? Right. But other times too, shit, we have to you know keep ourselves open so that we can react to other stuff that does happen because we also respond to things. So you know, it, it, part of it's you know part of it's talking and part of it's listening, right? right. And I think instead of just trying to figure out so fervently like what to say next i was like you know what i'm just gonna listen and i'm just gonna listen to what the universe has to say and i'm gonna see what happens and we talked before the show how within the course of one day things are happening yeah yes (laughs) it's like all right well then that's what my goal is and it sounds like you're in a similar boat you know what i mean yes and that's kind of how it's been i've tried to rely a little bit more on the people around me um you know to kind of cater to me but when you when you show vulnerability like that the universe loves that shit she's like right. oh, yeah I'll, I'll eat that up and she will reward you handsomely once you do so um you know and it's but it can be hard because you know you got days where you're just sitting around and you're like fuck i don't have anything to do this is i shouldn't be just sitting here doing this but then the next day you'll have this big fucking opportunity come knock on your door and it's like hey (laughs) right what's up you know so it's like well it's a good thing i didn't start all those thousands of projects i've always thought about because i wouldn't have time for this you know so it just things happen right when you need them to and uh you know sometimes that's the case so yes that's kind of been how it's been lately is that you know i haven't really been actively doing anything i've had I, I, lately i've been on a I've, I've been working with a lot of other people i'm getting ready to be on um this other girl's podcast tomorrow and um a whole bunch of other stuff i can't really talk about yet but <laughs> yes yeah, so you know and these are all at the hand of of others it's not me really actively even doing anything but just sitting here looking great so that's uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. to where i'm at but Anyway, speaking of great, um, I'm going to kind of briefly cover this and then then we'll get into tonight's topic of um, space anomalies, weird weird things in space. Um, So I don't know if you've heard, but there is an Oklahoma lawmaker, have you heard about this yet, that has, that is trying to push for a Bigfoot hunting season. Yeah. Yeah. yeah i've heard about that and um it's not that's not really it's not a that's not a good idea <laughs> <clears throat> you know for one we if if these things exist and i wholeheartedly believe that they do and that we've already proved that they do um but if they exist um we don't know how many there are so it really should be a protected species because we can't just go out into the woods killing them all to extinction i mean we're good at that but we shouldn't anymore, right? I mean, we're we're civilized now, I thought. Uh, you know, but on top of that, <clears throat> what if these things find out that we're hunting them? You know, then that's super dangerous. So say like, you know, they say we go out, we start trying to hunt them. They're, they're mean to us now. Whereas before you kind of have people that claim to have some friendly relationships with, with Sasquatch creatures. And, uh, you know, but, but we go out there hunting them, they end up having to maybe protect their young or whatever happens. They go after a hunter. Then you got a bunch of angry Oklahomians. I don't know what they're called. Um, that, go out in a mob and and burn down an entire fucking forest to try to kill these things in retaliation it's just it's not a good idea <clears throat> it's it's pretty terrible and so that's been a thing but there is a group there in oklahoma that has already started funding for um building an, a sanctuary <laughs> for orphaned uh bigfoot babies right well i mean so the guy that <sighs> the republican that introduced the bill <laughs> uh it, it was basically kind of like a um a way to draw on tourists it right? is this isn't yeah. this isn't a response to anything that happened um there's not okay. like an abnormally high amount of bigfoot sightings in that area it's just basically like let's do this and maybe it'll get a few more people out here um and and that's kind of the beginning of the end of it i don't think that this is you know kind of uh like i said it's not responsive of anything it's not that there was no no some no. sightings and now we want to eradicate right. these it, creatures. It, right it's just it's the fun thing to do but legally speaking you can register and get a bigfoot hunting license and if you shoot and kill one you're in the clear right well <clears throat> i mean there's a couple different ways to look at this i guess number one is 
could something benefit could something positive happen uh well maybe, maybe positive isn't the right word to use but could some could could this could just have the m- having additional eyes out in the forest looking for these things right. yield results might we find one now because even if it's done as a lark you have a bunch you know you have a couple parties out there looking for these things and right. it's more people than before and boom now we find one um as far as sparking some kind of interspecies war i think that that would uh it, it's an interesting thing to consider but um you know it's weird the bigfoot thing and we i forget what guest we had on but i i said i kind of echoed the statement the bigfoot stuff was always really fucking boring to me i never cared about it until probably like the last five years the narrative has begun to change and there's more and more there's more and more um kind of theories that these things could not be as just innocent and benign and Harry and the Hendersons as we thought they were, that they could be responsible for people disappearing in the national parks. Um, You know, they could be taking women as forest brides, uh, all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, They could, they could be traveling underground. They could be hopping through dimensions. They're a whole different alien species, whatever. So um, that to me if if you're going to believe any of that stuff, the fact that we would then start actively hunting them, I feel I don't feel as bad about it, right? Because it could be what the amount of people that we're seeing disappear from the national parks could that be them actively hunting us? Well, that's true. That's a good point. That that could you know, be. yeah, that could be. But I don't. I, I wouldn't expect if this bill were to get passed. I think that the only thing that's likely to come of it is some redneck shooting another redneck on accident out in the fucking woods. I, I don't think they're going to really no loss there. So <laughs> I shouldn't. Yeah. Say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to necessarily result in anything. Um, it, it may or may not like Washington state. Uh, they have laws protecting Bigfoot. You're not allowed to kill Bigfoot. And I think that that would make more sense. Yeah, that's so. I uh, I used to write for this other podcast, Grimerica, that was based out of Canada, and they had this. They had a thing that went on for a while because w- when I was writing for that show, that's when that Washington State thing got passed, okay. and that was a topic that they used to talk about amongst themselves a lot. And then sometimes they bring on guests, and they'd ask the guests to uh, weigh in on whether or not they would shoot the podcast or shoot shoot the Sasquatch. There was two there was two guys that ran that podcast and one of them was very much about hunting it and the other one was very much about not hunting it. So between themselves they had a nice little discourse going yeah. and they would bring in guests to it as well. And the guy that was pro hunting it, I mean you could you could easily understand the reasons for not hunting it right it's like everything you just mentioned right but their guy that was very pro hunting it was like look if these things are real we need to catch one we need evidence we need to put this thing to bed right and we need more eyes in the forest we need more motivated people to go out and get it and you know plenty of plenty of zoological discoveries have been made by people going into the woods with a fucking gun and and killing something and bringing it back for us to study right this sounds like one Right. This sounds like something that we should be trying to nail down because of the implications, not only about the greater like, you know, uh, zoological record as far as animals go on this planet, but our own ancestry. And are these are these creatures some kind of missing link? What kind of relationship do we have to them? Are they potentially extraterrestrial? You know? Um, I just think if we do kill, I mean, you know, and and I get it, the chances are low, but what if what if someone shoots one and it was it was the last one and we just killed it? Like, but is the last Bigfoot really going to be chilling in Oklahoma? Probably not. You know, but I don't and, want it to and be he, the standard everywhere. You know, to to raise those odds. And here's the other thing: what a what are the chances that we've already probably shot one? Oh well, a lot of people have made claims to that they've shot one. Right. So even accidentally. So as as the fact that like we could kill one and it could it could spark some kind of war i think that would have happened already well um, there are stories that they don't like us very much because they know that's why they hide because they know that we're dangerous right and and that's just that sucks man i hate people why are people so mean <laughs> it makes know. me sad i don't know i'm just obviously i'm not very for it i understand that stance i really do 
um, you know, the scientist in me is like, yeah, I'll cut that body open. But the humanitarian in me is like, no. <laughs> so, you know, because if they're a people and I believe that they are intelligent enough to be considered a type of people, we can't just go fucking kill them. That's not that's not OK. So I don't know. Then again, I don't really eat meat either. So <laughs> you didn't this weekend. Something's wrong with me. So whatever. Um but yeah, so that was uh that was that. That's been what's happening in the news lately. Everybody's been talking about it. But you're right, it's not because anything has happened, it's not because something has sparked this to happen. It's just that that's just what's it's probably just a fun touristy thing. However, it's a fun touristy thing with larger implications. So sure. you know, agreed. I think they should really step back and take a look at it before they, they push this through and you know, maybe talk to a couple of cryptozoologists of the community and see what they think. So you know that's right on so anyway on to tonight's topic on to happier um happier subjects i'll bring this one up real quick just because this is adorable um i think probably a lot of people haven't heard of this and i think that's fun um if you look up pictures of let me pull it up real quick i know i took a screenshot of it (laughs) if (laughs) if you look up pictures of saturn saturn has this little itty bitty teeny tiny little moon and they they've named it peggy (laughs) and it's the cutest thing in the world so they caught this moon on accident in 2013 okay and um now this one is not i mean this is obviously this is just kind of a silly feel-good story there's nothing weird about it um but peggy is just hiding kind of right behind one of saturn's rings and it's so small it almost looks like just a smudge on the camera lens because it's so small like you can't even you can't even see it and they don't expect peggy to grow anymore um as a matter of fact peggy will probably not last much longer but um when i was doing research for this i found out about this tiny moon and i wanted to to bring it up for all my listeners that that love moons as much as i do so (laughs) That was my feel good for the evening. Oh, look at that. Can Human interest at, story. You look at a Peggy? I did. She's it's so a dot, little. It's, it's, it's a dot on a picture. <laughs> one, one, one point two miles across. Yeah, it's, yes, it's tiny. <laughs> it's probably, it, it might, as far as we know, Peggy is the smallest moon in existence. It's crazy. You could walk it. You could walk uh, Peggy. I mean, but wouldn't you rather just call an Uber? I mean, that's kind of, you could walk it. What are you trying to prove? You know what I mean? Just... I would just say that I did. That's me. I, I love a good gimmick. That's for sure. I, I'm, I'm into that. And Peggy, she's got it all. I'm telling you, she's, she's tiny, but she's mighty. <laughs> but yeah, that's Saturn's, Saturn's little moon, Peggy, in case you didn't know. That's kind of, you know, one of the newer, again, that was in uh, 2013. They found that. So that was a newer discovery. Um. Pat, you sent me an article which kind of kicked off this this whole conversation. Um, do you want to do you want to talk about that? Uh, what about the alien megastructure? Yeah, yeah. So that I mean that's been on my radar for a while. I don't know exactly what article I sent. I I get stoned and send you things. I fucking <laughs> don't know. I guess you should send them back to me before we do the <laughs> oh, show. But yeah, one of the <clears throat> one of the stories from the past couple years. Uh, was there was uh, uh, 1,500 light years away, they found this star that seemed to kind of wink in and out of existence. And the only explanation at the time that they could come up with was that and this was this was crazy that this is what their minds went to. Mm-hmm. But I guess when you, because it seems like a, a lot of, it, it seems very abstract, but I guess in some ways it's not. We'll leave it up to the audience to decide. So scientists spot this star, uh, 15 hundred light years away and it seems to kind of wink in and out intermittently and they're trying to figure out why it's doing that and the conclusion that they came to some scientists at least was that there was some type of mega structure built around the star that was rotating and then an alien civilization had built the structure to harness the energy from it so imagine uh some type of you know imagine like you know how a globe has that arm at the top and the bottom of it, right? That it's that it spins around. 
Right. Okay. Imagine if aliens had built that around a sun. And that way, when that arm goes around it, it collects solar energy or something. And when that arm passes in front of, uh, passes between us and the sun, there would be a dist- there would be a disruption in the light. And that's what the th- that's what they theorized that happened. Theorized that happened was that there was they were seeing stars with megastructures built around them, um, which is kind of a reach, right? That's not exactly where my mind would go to right away. But then again, I don't spend all whole bunch of time sitting around thinking about the lights in the sky (laughs) uh and i'm assuming that the article that i sent you was because some new information had been released that backed this up (laughs) yeah yeah okay (laughs) so maybe you could talk about the article that i sent um i mean it didn't have anything to it they're still saying well I mean, for the most part, they're saying it's 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 probably it might be like a, a Dyson swarm. So they had expected right. to have more information on it when they came out with the uh, some telescope that I can't remember the name of in 2018. And <laughs> so they they were expecting that they would be able to, to look at it a little bit better and figure it out. And they still haven't. It basically is is what. <laughs> the gist of it which means that you know as of right now we still don't know but yeah so what happens is that the light from the star which should be on stars don't turn off and on you know so the light from the star does turn off and on (laughs) and it's so large it's so large that they can't imagine what might be in front of it that causes that to happen so and it doesn't it never goes completely off is the thing it's just like it's gotten up to um 22 percent um coverage has been has been covered over this thing but never fully and never beyond that um so something comes and moves in front of it every once in a while and then and then moves away um and they just they don't really know what it might be and i mean i guess it could be some type of mega structure i mean you know <laughs> and why not i mean we don't know we just we have we have no way of knowing it's it's 1500 light years away we we don't know um so you know maybe one day we will um have an update that would be pretty cool to to have an update will we uh probably not but <laughs> yeah this this stuff i and it's kind of like this combined with the black knight satellite which is what i want to talk about next this, this stuff was always kind of weird for me to think about because i think when we when we think about aliens we think about um very modern very present uh creatures in a spaceship that come to earth Mm -hmm. right what we don't kind of think about is you know far off galaxies where they've built these giant ancient structures right what their civilization looks like what their home world looks like you know, for all the time that we spend thinking about the vehicles and the crafts, where do we talk about the bases, where they live, where they originate from? So whenever whenever you talk about like, you know, uh, th- th- there's different kinds of science fiction. I think there's like mainstream science fiction, which where the alien kind of doesn't exist very much above the spaceship that's in our atmosphere or something like that, uh, that just showed up three days ago, right? It's all very in the present tense. Right. Um, but when you start talking about these large, like almost incomprehensible structures built around the sun and all this crazy shit, like that to me is like more like the stuff that I would read in heavy metal magazine growing up. Um, and I don't know how familiar you guys are with heavy metal, but it, it's basically, it was like a science fiction comic book. It's still being published today. I still subscribe to it, but it, it was more, you know, it not science fiction the way total recall or something that's kind of mainstream something that's a little bit more out there you know what i mean kind of more yeah uh, steampunk or cyberpunk or just like just not yeah fringy you know right um so the idea that like these these concepts these things could exist in our universe was always very uh intriguing to me you know that it's it's not just slick flying saucers and 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 gray beings with big black eyes that these super fucking huge structures and and all this crazy shit and uh something that had been on my radar for a very long time is uh the black knight satellite and i i can't 
pinpoint exactly where I heard about this. And what's even more interesting than in researching this topic for the show tonight, I can't even really pinpoint who came up with the name um, because it is kind of a, a, a obtuse name for a, a, for this thing. And what this well, thing is been around forever. And so it, it, uh, the, the legend of it goes back to, you know, for, I mean, gosh, I think since the 1940s, the 1950s, a long time. And they, they attribute some of it back to Tesla from signals that he heard. Yes. Yes. I think, yeah, I think Tesla is probably the oldest, uh, reference to it but yeah i mean it's been around for so long it's just that nowadays we have a picture of it and we'll get to that um yeah. but, but go ahead continue with what you were saying uh so it's about 100 meters across uh it's a object that supposedly is in polar orbit over uh earth mm-hmm. and um it's been spotted a couple times by astronauts, people in the space station. There's some pictures of it that you can find online. There's one really famous, really good picture. Uh, and it, basically, it's this satellite that's in orbit around Earth that uh, is not man-made. And um, that people think is as old as, let me see, 13,000 years. Yes, that's right. <laughs> now, where they got that date from, I do not know. <laughs> no no one carbon tested it, right? I don't know where you get yeah, this. Yeah, no one's, uh, no one's getting close to it, yeah. It's... But what's cool about it is that, and this is once again why I think this was on my radar as soon as I heard of it, is that while that year is kind of a weird year to come up with th- this is one of the and now now it's so it's a fucking meme but this was one of the first ancient alien myths that i remember reading about or hearing about um before you had the tv show on the history channel and that greek guy with the crazy hair yeah. that hearing this was like that's why this always kind of stuck in the back of my mind because this idea that there's this satellite that's orbiting earth that's been orbiting earth for thirteen thousand years you're just like what like you know now, now the idea that there's ancient aliens is is you know almost commonplace um but this i i want to say this was the first piece of concrete ancient alien mythos that existed yeah it, it's it's old i mean it is a very old legend um and then yeah so then nasa goes and releases a bunch of pictures from space and people found this particular one which since then there's been others but they found this particular one and everybody kind of ran with it and they're like oh my gosh look it's the black knight satellite and it it does look strange uh you know it's something out there i mean it's it, something exists <laughs> you know it's, that's orbiting us um that you know you really can't know what it is um but what nasa says is that it is a it's likely a thermal blanket from one of the uh, apollo missions there's different explanations another one that they came out with was that it was a spy satellite and and when the original pictures were taken they couldn't declassify that at the time and now that enough time has passed they can admit it that it's a spy said they the problem with it is that there's a lot of evidence about uh there's a lot of pictures and there's a lot of uh radio signals and 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 stuff like that um pertaining to objects orbiting earth unexplained objects that are in orbit around earth right Mm -hmm. and the black knight kind of according to some people that mythos has become a catch-all for a lot of these different things right Right. going back to tesla uh picking up radio signals back in the 1890s right and then we get these pictures uh from the space station and then we get these pictures from nasa and then you know amateur astronomers take these pictures and they're all kind of being lumped together but actually what it is is a half dozen completely different things yeah they could all be separately explained on their own but when you lump them together they you you can try to mold them into telling a bigger story here which is the story of the black knight um so the detractors will say they will pick apart every single piece of evidence and find a different explanation for it and say there is no correlation between all this data it's just a bunch of random shit that people are putting together and coming up with this black knight thing um 
Well, I would say that the photos that we have that that claim to be of the of the Black Knight satellite. I mean, I, I mean, that's. I would say those are all the same object. I mean, I'd say we're yeah. able to. No, they definitely look like it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think we're able to now track that object. We know it's there. Everybody knows it's there. Um, you know, it's again, it's not like some big secret. This isn't a Photoshop job. It's it's really no. space. Whatever the hell it is, is really orbiting us. And um, so I, you know, I think that what whether it be you know some ancient alien technology that's now following us and and tracking us, or whether it be a thermal blanket um you know it's that has now become what is what we would consider the black knight satellite as of right now um even though you know are are they talking about something else if we ever capture it and find out what it is i don't know why we don't try to like catch it why couldn't we catch it and get it well because right now all the only space program we have is nasa and that's what that's why we need things like spacex right and i know that like it's kind of uh I was I was explaining to my kids who Elon Musk was at dinner this weekend. Okay. And um he, some people think he's a douchebag or whatever. And I don't I think he's unfortunately however <laughs> however you want to rate his uh the way he pays his employees, which I think is fucking ridiculous. What did Thomas Edison pay his people? Do you even fucking know? You know what I mean? Isn't he wasn't th- wasn't that like the whole thing about Edison was that like he ran that fucking invention office and he stole a bunch of patent clerks ideas stole a bunch of clerks ideas like they would come to him with inventions and then he would patent them or something like that. Yeah, like, he's a douchebag. Yeah, well, okay, well the same thing. People, Elon Musk is a dick because he pays people at his factory minimum wage or some shit. I don't fucking know. But uh, so a lot of people like to hate on this guy. But one of the cool things that he's doing is he's trying to. Um, privatized space travel he's trying to make a a company that's not beholden to any government uh be able to travel in space and they're i mean they use space the nasa uses spacex when they don't want to send their own fucking rocket up but they got to get something to people in the space station use spacex for that shit right yeah yeah and if anyone's gonna go do random stuff like you know what we're gonna go check out that what the hell that black knight is right it's gonna be stuff like spacex it's not gonna be nasa you know, so it's all the more reason for us to invest and support this idea of, you know, commercial space travel. <sighs> what? I I support I support commercial space travel um completely. I think it's a it's a wonderful thing. I think that it's very exciting. Um but fuck elon musk he, he's not a good dude i can't i can't support uh, another super villain i just can't I just, so there's too many already he's got enough money he could he could pay his people what you know what what they're worth and and still do what he needs to do but i can't get behind him for that reason and, and that sucks and it's like you know what what he, but he's one of those people he doesn't you know it's kind of fucking odd he's really not very smart he's not he's another person he's good at business he's not smart though and um you know that's god here we go i'm gonna go off on a fucking musk tangent um but you know other people are doing things as well china's getting ready to have a, a space mission in 2022 you know, we're not the only we're not the only country in the world that's doing space exploration. I mean, there's just other ways to go about it. And you know, will will he will he go down and pull pull down the Black Knight satellite and figure out what it is? I don't know. Probably he's kind of a conspiracy theorist himself, so he might. Um, it's just unfortunate that we have these kind of people as as billionaires. You know, it's it sucks. It makes me upset. <laughs> I would rather see someone like him be a billionaire than someone like Jeff Bezos. I mean, at least he's. I I don't know. I don't. I don't get the hatred with Elon Musk and he's never been in my kitchen. So I am not trying to sing him his praises or come to his defense. Uh, that's not my job. I think he can, he can do that on his own or he could not cause he probably doesn't give a fuck. Right. But um, you know, I think that as a, as a society, as a culture, like we need people that kind of do the shit that he does. Um, I think that it's as a species, it's, it's beneficial to us to have a somebody somebody actively pursuing electric cars <laughs> you know um whether or not it, it, it should be him or it should be someone else i mean le- let me see what my choices are what do i get to vote on you know but i'm glad he's doing it because that means that somebody is same thing with with 
commercial or private, however you want to look at it, space travel. You know, I, other people are doing it cool, but you know, I'm I'm gl- he, to me, he's fulfilling a need that we have, right? Um, as far as exploiting workers, um, I I am a worker and I've been exploited most of my life, so yeah. I'm kind of I'm all right with it, but I'm also a science fiction geek, and the dude shot a convertible up into space with a dummy in it wearing a space suit, like in the opening scene of Heavy Metal fucking all right you get cool points in my book for that you know but I, like i said i'm not trying to turn this into a character debate about him i don't fucking care you know yeah but but i i, I my point was was that you know these are the kind of things that spacex could potentially do for us is these kind of like niche missions and these these niche space jaunts you know and hopefully hopefully we find something else about well, we need funding for this stuff you know like we were just talking about the bigfoot thing earlier you know what would be fucking ideal for us discovering uh bigfoot would be to you know pay some of us who would be willing to go out and and do the fucking footwork and do the research if, if we were able to apply for grants and you know to get um you know funding to do these things then we would go out and do them i mean that's you know that's just the way it is you do have people that 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 care about things other than other than money and you know believe it or not and you know it's just i understand it's hard because you you know might end up throwing all this money at, at a project that might not uh they might not follow through with or whatnot but it's the same thing with with uh with um you know casual space exploration there there are <laughs> there would be other people that would do it if they had the money to do it they would do it and they but they just don't there's not enough interest i guess i'm not sure exactly i don't know well, there's no ROI. I mean, when you look at, well, they like to argue there's no ROI, right? right. So if you, the, the reason that we had the initial space boom in the 60s was because we were trying to prove something to the Russians. Yeah, we right? were a dick measuring contest. Yeah, okay. Well, well, there's, <laughs> when it comes to a guy measuring his dick and he's trying to get every inch out of it, he can. There's not enough money in the bank to, you know, to, <laughs> to we'll, <laughs> we'll overdraft the bank account for that. But <laughs> right. <laughs> w- once that was been proven, what was the reason to keep it going? Yeah, you know there wasn't and that. well so on the surface there's not because you know you go to the moon it's not like you're going to find gold up there that you bring back so okay well if it costs us eight million to go to the moon but we bring back 10 million in gold well then it makes sense to keep doing it yeah. but when it costs you eight million to go to the moon and you come back and you what do you got some fucking rocks right right but what you have to remember is that, and this is why it, the space program exists in any capacity to this day, is because there's also, uh, there's other ways that the kind of the space program makes money um, in ways of uh, technological achievements, right? Velcro was invented because we were trying to figure out a way to, you know, fasten things for space travel, okay? Velcro is a byproduct of the space program. I didn't know that. Okay. Yes. So there you go. Think about all the different applications Velcro has, who owns the, you know, uh, there. Okay. That was worth it. And that's, that's something very stupid that I came up with off the top of my head on a Tuesday night. I'm sure if we went into computer components, modules, sensors, all this other shit, there's all other kinds of technology, R and D that was originally for the space program that, at some point, they were able to take and then sell to the commercial, tell, sell to the consumer base, and then boom, make money off that as well. So th- there's other ways that you can kind of make money off the space program, but those are long term back channel stuff, right? There's not, like I said, you're not going to get gold, um, and I think that's why they've been hesitant to really dump money into it, you know, because the only time they were very gung ho about it was when it was a morale booster. And it's not really a morale booster anymore, you know. Well, they're trying to get us to get excited about it again. Right. They are. Um, And, you know, there's definitely a a reason for that. And likely it's because we're um, we will current at the current rate we're going, we will outlive the planet. And so we need to leave the planet. And, um, you know, so, you know, right now NASA is getting ready to go back to the moon and what, 2023, I think it's coming up. And, you know, the point of going there is to mine it for resources to propel further into space. So, um, you know, that's, that's an interesting concept. So, I mean, NASA is doing that. I think, you know, having the help of SpaceX isn't a terrible idea. Um, but 
uh, you know, I don't know. So, I mean, there was a newfound interest in it, you know, and it's because we ended up having a douchebag with a lot of money that, that had interest in it to begin with. So, <laughs> well, I'd like to say the world was built by different people, but unfortunately it's <laughs> usually the douchebags with the money that get things done. Uh, um, yeah. I don't know. Hopefully one of these so, things so won't exist. So I'm hoping. <laughs> Something that you said that I thought was pretty interesting was um, the idea of the government funding grants for cryptozoology. And uh, I mean, I guess when you think about it, how many uh, archaeological advancements or discoveries, right, or zoological discoveries or anything like this was done because of some museum or government funded expedition? I would like to, I think most of them, right? It's not private people that go into the Congo just to fucking see what kind of butterflies they can steal. It, it can, right? it can't be. So like most of the time, these things are funded through, um, well, like where you get most, when you look at like the medical field and where you get most of your like medical journals, it's it's through colleges. And, um, and there is some government money at hand in that. And then there are people like in the Erickson project, that, that was all privately funded. The, the big Bigfoot uh, DNA genome project. That was all private, privately funded. So they found an investor and it just unfortunately went horribly wrong. So, of course, the investor pulled out. Um, but anyway, so so it, you know, it, it can be both. It can be the mixture of both. But I mean, yeah, the government could definitely work in some type of uh, and I mean, gosh, it would be most likely a write off to to fund these types of projects. And I, I don't see why they wouldn't, because you could make money there's there's a market for this you know what i mean well, you know if you could if you could make a whole well just like you think about it if you could make a whole jurassic park you'd fucking be a millionaire you know what i mean you'd probably be a billionaire <laughs> um yeah. because people would pay money to come see dinosaurs right well people would come pay money to see bigfoot you know they just would it's interesting it's 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 an anomaly it's strange people would definitely pay to come see it and good money to come see it at that um so it is very silly that they don't now a lot of people say that they don't because the government already knows about them and they're trying to cover them up i don't i don't believe that um i just think that they don't take the science very seriously and I, i'm not sure why it's really bizarre that they don't but they don't you know a sure topic i wouldn't mind doing sometime and i don't know if this is just a story that i heard one night on coast to coast and there's really nothing more to it than that but i had heard that back in the day the when when like the government like i don't know like early 1900s the government uh had financed an expedition into the grand canyon and they found all of these caves with all this crazy shit in it and uh they had sectioned it off you know no trespassing put up signs and, and gates and shit and then shipped everything off to the smithsonian and then it's sitting in a back room somewhere I guess kind of like an in Indiana Jones. I've I've, um, I've heard yeah similar. I mean similar things about the Smithsonian. Maybe we just talk about the Smithsonian in general. Yeah, w were you hearing that it was from stuff they found in the Grand Canyon? Um, I I don't th I don't think I've heard the Grand Canyon, but I've heard of like things from around the world. Okay. And uh, so yeah, but the the cave thing would kind of be an interesting. Uh, I know Ryan Tremblay was telling me about this um, instance where. I can't remember what it's called. I've got information on it, but where these people went into this cave and they ended up finding bones of giants and um, they, that might've been it. That sounds, that sounds like it was. Yeah. I want to say it's called like flat rock cave or something like that. It's something rock cave, um, which of course it is. Cause every cave is, but <laughs> <laughs> of course. So, so general, um but no yeah he was telling me something about that i mean it could it could be it probably is along like the same lines but i've heard of things being in the smithsonian before um which i i would i mean i would believe i'd buy it so maybe that's why they don't feel the need to fund anything because they already have all the answers and they've got it at the smithsonian i don't know right or i guess like you know what's to stop is it because like you know because like you can't like send an email to the i don't know just like the government at gov dot you know whatever but like <laughs> the man the, at gov dot edu like yeah. hey uh how can i get some money to go down 
I need like I need like five hundred dollars for the weekend to go right. to Point Pleasant and check out this Mothman shit. Like, who can I get a check from? <laughs> yeah, you're right about that. Yeah, I mean, I yeah, you're right. I mean, there's no way to just kind of ask any. But I'll start writing. I could you can start writing your local congressman and be like, why aren't we funding this? But then I don't right because you you, you would think that like state funds or like university funds, they, there's gonna be a lot of oversight about how they spend that shit. And if they have somebody that's like, hey, look, we're gonna go to this place where we're gonna go off the coast of Miami where we think there's underground structures and we're gonna try to take pictures and shit that's going to be in like you know archaeological magazines or something and it's going to be great publicity and we're going to find something and there's a very it, it always comes back to roi there's a very very good chance that we're going to go to this spot that's been vetted already and we're going to we know exactly what we're going to find but we're going to find something new and we're going to take pictures of it or we're going to sell it or fucking whatever we're going to monetize it somehow and I think that that's what a lot of these expeditions is, is going to places where they already know what they're going to find. It's not like, oh, we're going in here. We don't know what's going to be there. It's like, well, we, we have an idea what's going to be there. This is what this is our piece of it that we're going to get, you know? Yeah. As opposed to like a cryptozoologist or some kind of 14 investigator that's going to go to these people, these same people, supposedly, and say, we're going to go do this. Uh, there's no real concrete evidence that we're going to find anything for sure. It might be a waste of time and money. And people are going to probably think you're crazy. It's very not conventional for, uh, for you to fund this. But on the off chance that you hit gold, then, um, you know, hey, you get the scientific discovery of the, the most you know, century or something. Right. Because I if mean, you do hit gold, then it is, that has a lot of gold to be had in them, in them hills. But so that, so then I guess you look at it like this, like they need to be super, like you need to be the best of the best. Yeah. Right. You can't be somebody that just gets 2000 YouTube views on your fucking podcast. Like you need to be like the, you know, the, the most authoritative mind on the subject or something. You know what I mean? Well, um, that's another thing in the community since I have because I have really never been into the cryptid community until recently. And one thing that I'm finding with this is a lot of these self most of the self proclaimed cryptozoologists actually aren't. They're just fucking dudes with Google and a podcast. And it's like <laughs> I could I could not agree with you more. That's exactly true. my perception as well. <laughs> right. It's fucking true. And it's like you've never actually even like maybe you like walked around your local woods or some shit one time but like you've never actually like went anywhere have you <laughs> like you've never actually been in these places or you know you don't talk to the witnesses or you know you don't actually sit down and and have your fucking you know your fucking crazy corkboard on the wall where you're drawing all these lines you don't actually do that do you and they don't no they don't they just they it, they're just parroting everything that that they've heard and that's well, it. that that's why it was so but okay i completely agree with you but that's why it was so interesting when you said to me earlier that like like oh but you know where's the grant money it's like fucking for what like your your comcast bill for this month when you went on the internet and looked shit up like why the fuck is someone gonna give you money what are you doing you know what i mean like like you're, you're going on google it doesn't require money it's just free like no no you're, you're absolutely right u of i is not gonna give you 15 fucking thousand dollars to go on google and look shit up no like no they're not no so right. so i think that's what that I, I think that that's that's probably like that should be the motivation that sh that should be like the cornerstone for this then like okay so uh because there's crowdfunding now right well, we need if, if there was oh go ahead i'm sorry i was gonna say if there if there's some goal i think a lot of times people say that they want to do things and their reason for not doing things is money right because everyone wishes they had more money than they do so like if you go to, go to someone like oh i really want to make this movie and they're like, why don't you make it oh i don't got the money dude and everyone's like yeah i got you i know i understand you know or like oh like i want to do i, I really want to go research fucking uh you know i don't know melon head people in, in pennsylvania and it's like well why not and like, oh, i got the money like all right but like here's the thing if you have your shit together and you put together you do the you, you put together a good package you can crowdfund just to buy anything true all right 
so like you know and as long as you're realistic about what you need like how, how much money do you really need to go to pennsylvania and research melon head people yeah. for a three-day weekend yeah. you know what i mean what's that maybe 2200 bucks but all right but are you gonna go are you gonna videotape everything are you gonna go do this are people gonna get results out of it even if your results are you don't find the melon head people or you do and they're just melon head people they're not you know not more than that um i don't know i feel like it, if it's <sighs> i'm a problem solver and if that's really the problem is that there's not funding and there's not grants like how can you work around it or how can you make yourself seem legit enough to get one i don't know i agree with that yeah i I agree with what you're saying i think that one of the biggest issues one thing that we really need to take away from people right now is is the power to be able to call themselves cryptozoologists just because they again have have google and have read a couple books you know i I don't think that that really that doesn't make you you're not actually studying anything you're just learning that's all and even learning is a huge part of it but you're not taking what you've learned and applying it to a new situation so you're not there's no science involved so how can you have ologist at the end of it when there's no science (laughs) 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 that's for one you know so we need to fucking kick these people because there is no degree for cryptozoology there isn't one well okay that's not true actually there are very few select colleges where you can you can get a degree in cryptozoology there is but um you don't need one to be a cryptozoologist and um, most people don't have a degree they might have a degree in other things like zoology or biology or you know whatever um but not specifically in cryptozoology so, but we need to stop letting people use the term so that way the people that are actually actively out there working on this stuff are taken seriously you know it's hurting the credibility it's hurting the community more than anything but you know people are so desperate for i don't know to just to be involved in something that's different fringe and weird that they they don't care they don't they really don't give a shit about the science they just want to sell their show or whatever and it's I would. I have feelings about this. (laughs) No, I hate. I I appreciate your passion. My my two cents is from coming from the background that I have, which is definitely not a cryptozoological background, if one indeed does exist, uh, would be that if look if this is something that you want to do, and that you're you're serious about doing, that you're passionate about doing, and this is what you want your next to your name for the rest of your life and and beyond, I would say you're better off getting a degree in investigative journalism than you are in biology or anything like that because anything that you learn in biology you're basically trying to uh contradict with your uh cryptozoological pursuits well maybe not maybe not exactly depending on what exactly you're you're investigating or what what direction you're going with it but um you're not looking at the fossil record you're not looking at uh conventional biology as we know it you're trying to prove it wrong you're trying to find something outside the realm of all that right and what you need to uh really have sharper than an understanding of biology i would think because it's not like there's mountains of evidence laying around for what you're trying to prove anyway that's the whole thing there is no evidence there's no proof right there is nothing to study there's no slides to look at as of right now now maybe through your pursuits you might find some but that part i think goes back to the investigative journalism thing learn how to learn right learn how to find shit out how to figure shit out how to go out there and 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 dig up evidence and follow leads and talk to people because if you're not doing that then like you said you're just some dude with google and it's not really that's not going to get you anywhere than every other dude with google is going to get and guess what there's a lot of dudes with google and there's a lot of google to go around right (laughs) so you know if you want something that no one else got you have to be willing to do what other people don't do and that's uh get up off your ass and go out there Uh, and go right and go out there and do it and so it's like i don't know you know it's mm, like i said i've you know me and me and a couple other people we commiserate together about it because you know we we're told all the time how wrong we are by people that just have google and it's like mm. (laughs) right yes you're right i'm so incorrect i just I've, i've actually been out there and i've been doing it but man i'm fucking wrong um so you know it's kind of a more of a personal thing but i agree i say fuck college period i mean just but just make sure that you're just doing it though don't stop learning that's the most important part you know all the books and all the google is very important um (laughs) you know it is um it's it's a very big part of it but you have to know how to apply what you're learning 
um, to to advancement. And and if you don't, if you don't have that skill, if that's something that you like, then you're not going to do very well in, in, in this field. Um, you know, it's it's imperative that you have that. Now, if you just want to be an entertainer and you just want to tell the stories, then fucking do that and call yourself what you are. But don't come and fucking and, and jump all over my shit and act like, you know, you know your stuff when you have never even left your basement. So <laughs> just, <laughs> this sounds yeah, way more personal than it is, I think. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're talking about someone. I'm not. I'm not. But you, 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 you're seeing a face in your mind when you fucking say <laughs> that. That's what it so. sounds like. I know it's not. It's it's not quite that personal. Well, um, let me ask you something. Yeah. Or do they have a beard? Stop it. Because <laughs> <laughs> they all have fucking beards, and they wear probably a black yes. Shirt right now. <laughs> I'm gonna say most likely. <laughs> But but you know before we get too off topic and and in the show I do want to bring up one more thing um uh, regarding uh space anomalies and the fun stuff um I want to talk about the wow signal I, I've never gotten to talk about it on this show but okay cool you know everybody knows about it um where you should anyway but if you don't uh in I believe it was 1977 yes. they had the satellite going and um it's called the it's called the big ear satellite and, and where's this big ear satellite at <laughs> oh, oh, ohio state university i thought you knew that i thought you had the wikipedia page open no too, i so. know yeah no i know oh, that yeah. based um, on ohio of course it's in ohio if i can ohio is strange and <laughs> i mean <laughs> it bred me so um but so they it's like a whole village <laughs> 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 talking about a breeding party Jesus. I, would, I, I would believe it um so the big ear satellite it's well the big ear is like a it's a, a telescope that searches for noises right and or not so much noises i guess radio signals right that's more what it is um but you know it's kind of in hopes it, it's it's there through the um through uh seti which is the search for extraterrestrial intelligence and um you know so seti's job is you know to find extraterrestrial intelligence so anyway so um in in 1977 um one of the astronomers kind of walked in that day to check out the findings on it and it's just these really long really boring papers that just have all these numbers and weird stuff on it um but they did finally find something that seemed to be uh you know of of sustenance so the guy circled the paper and you know this is the most famous thing that everybody knows of it and and wrote wow you know with a big old exclamation point um so you gotta imagine you know that guy came into work that day you know thinking that that we were contacted or you know not we were contacted by aliens but that you know we found some type of alien life um so that i mean that's that's pretty neat and to this day i don't think they have a couple of different explanations for what it could be um but i don't think they really know but it hasn't happened again um so that's you know that is an interesting you know take I, you know i don't know what what could it have been i think that you know it definitely could have been something important um but you know the way that that the way that things travel in space is that you know this could have been a very old signal and we might have missed our our time or whatever um so what what's really interesting about this to me now um is that in um in 2012 uh when the world ended do you remember that um back in 2012 on the it was the 35th uh, 35th anniversary of the wow signal um the this observatory got together and um they beamed up um like different like twitter messages to the location of the alleged signal and um it was you know there was some hashtag going around it was some it was some big deal sponsored there was they sent like little videos and everything up up to space and hopes to i don't know just for fun i guess i mean gosh at that point it had been almost well it was 35 years so was, yeah <laughs> you know they're they using the hashtag like, chasing yeah. ufos yeah, yeah yeah and so um you know that's kind of fun you know again nothing's come of it maybe things have maybe that's why the world i mean maybe that's how it ended up ending was that you know they saw a message and they just fucking obliterated us and we don't know <laughs> yeah the, the i guess the searching searching outer space for radio signals yeah 
seems to me like the most random way. Like, just think about if we made contact via that. Mm -hmm. Think about how much that would fly in the face of basically everything that you've been taught about UFOs and extraterrestrials. Well, not taught, but I mean, like, you know, everything that that, uh, pop culture holds potentially true about UFOs and extraterrestrials. Okay. What do you mean? I mean, like, okay, like, they're visiting us. Oh, yeah. Right? But well, it's like, yeah. but but when we when we discover them, when there's officially proof of them, or that they're they're in they're in contact with the government already, right? Oh, but we're gonna accidentally hear one of their their fucking radio commercials from like <laughs> eight million light years away, and it's like, but think about how ridiculous that is. Like, if, if any of this stuff is true, like we're, like they're abducting us, like they've been here, they they're they've been here for thousands of years. They have an eighteen thousand year old satellite that's orbiting the fucking polar uh, ice caps and shit. But we're gonna accidentally hear, you know, we're gonna we're gonna shoot this, uh, you know, satellite dish. We're gonna aim the satellite dish at some point in the night sky and hear like this like erratic radio signal that's going to be proof of life. You know what I mean? It, it just seems well, very contradictory to like literally everything else. I mean, it, it doesn't seem, it doesn't really seem that way to me. Um, you know, when you, you know, once you accept the fact that that space is infinite, right. Then you accept the, the fact of infinite possibilities. You know, when you accept that extraterrestrials just simply means things that don't live on this planet, there's, then, then you accept that there's different, species of extraterrestrial and there could there's i mean more likely than anything else ever there's at least at least one other earth out there with humans on it right so they would be emitting radio signals and we could be us us searching for radio signals could be kind of us you know reaching out and to contact them just because they were another human living on another earth somewhere else they, they're still technically actually they're, they're extraterrestrials they're aliens um so i mean it doesn't seem that ridiculous because if we found one of those you know life forms like that that are just so you know sad and not as advanced as we are um it would be very mundane it would be like i mean it would be you'd have to like announce that on like a monday because it would just be the perfect news like we found aliens but they're just humans <laughs> like it's a, they can't we can't get to them and they can't get to us but they're out there <laughs> you know and so it would be boring um but it doesn't that does just because we discover we would discover that doesn't mean that the other aliens that are out there don't exist still you know what i mean other aliens probably might not even use radio technology they might use something different and they might not even know what the hell we're doing with this you know um we just don't know. I mean, the possibilities again, infinite possibilities. So, I mean, that's just something to to think about. I don't, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, however, you know, we don't really, the big year satellite isn't, um, there anymore. We don't use it anymore. Right. Well, even like the SETI satellite, it's, or the SETI uh, satellite dish. Yeah. Like, I mean, if we already had a secret space program going on with these things or Eisenhower made some kind of treaty with them back in the fifties, why the fuck would we spend all this money building like this big microphone? You know what yeah. I mean? To like try to listen to form. It's like, wait a minute. We know where they are though. We know who they are already. We know everything they know. Yeah. You know, to me, it's just one of those like contradiction things. You know what I mean? Like, like do aliens come from different dimensions or do they come from different planets? Do they come from different solar systems or maybe they all come from everywhere. And I don't know. I don't know. But I, I just feel like when, when you get into like the signals and stuff, and this this the science of listening for radio waves from like deep space and shit that uh it almost seems like the most realistic of all this you know what i mean um probably because it hasn't really found anything yet but that this would be our earnest attempt at finding extraterrestrial life this would be the program that scientists come up with like legit real scientists that are trying to solve this problem and you know what i mean that are engineers that are problem solvers yeah. this is probably what they would come up with because it's probably the only thing they could do and it probably gives them the best um way to search the cosmos you know what i mean instead of like with a telescope looking at shit you know and like oh what can we see over here oh sometimes it lights up sometimes it don't 
you know, that maybe pointing the microphone into deep space and listening for things might be the most efficient way to scan the universe looking for well, life. right it can, it can scan efficiently um but again the things that it's looking for if those don't exist um then, you know then uh you know we're kind of wasting our time now there are other areas in the universe where you know we have found other radio waves or you know whatever and of course we you know claim that it's something that we can explain but how do we know if we can't like physically go there and like look at it and check it out how do we know that it's, we can explain it away you know we don't mm -hmm. um you know especially because i personally i just don't believe that we're advanced enough in our science to even understand most of of what's going on out there in space you know um oh i completely agree yeah i just i we're just i think we're just so we're just like babies in our evolutionary you know believe it or not i, I think that we just would have a really long way to go and um you know we might not ever even make it to that point of advance i think that there's probably more elements to the periodic table that we haven't discovered and all kinds of stuff and um you know but but i see what you're saying i mean why would they waste their time on building these things well it's possible that they were built to use for other things so i mean if we were already in contact with aliens and they wanted us to build some type of beacon that they could latch onto to find us easier or we could latch onto them to receive messages or whatever. I mean, that wouldn't be too far fetched. It's just that we don't provide that information when it's given to us. You know, it just depends on on what it is. But but of course, there's one in West Virginia. Um, you know, I just thought I'd <laughs> point that out. This whole uh, Midwestern high strangeness is West Virginia considered Midwest still? I don't know. I think it is. Eh, it's kind of soft. I, I took my going back to what you were saying about science uh, and being an imperfect science. Yeah. Uh, I, I took my kid to Fermi Lab um, like two years ago, and uh, they have like super colliders there and shit. And we were going. They have like an open house thing like twice a year where you can come through and you can see everything. And we did it, and it was interesting to hear them talk about like how, you know that's one of the places where they like measure underground for neutrinos and stuff. Wow. And it's interesting about how much of their science is based on things that they can't observe. Yes, but what they do is they observe the like the way that things react around where they think something's at, yeah. like the way they know. Like, okay, imagine if you have like a sheet, right? and you put a bowling ball in the middle of the sheet the sheet's going to dip down around the bowling ball right so because because the weight is pushing it down well imagine that bowling ball was invisible so you have the sheet the sheet's held taut it's flat you drop this invisible bowling ball in it it's still going to dip down and create like a divot in the sheet right well, that's like matter. That's the universe. And there's all these like imaginary things that are like poking holes and bending matter and space time around different parts of the universe. And we can't even see the invisible bowling ball. Right. But because we can see the curvature of space time and matter around it, we can deduce what it's made of, how heavy it is, how big it is, shit like that. But we can't actually see any of this stuff. Right. Right. All we're doing is we're taking the the minuscule stuff that we can wrap our heads around and just kind of extrapolate and making wild fucking guesses. And that's what passes for, like, the highest level of our science these days. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. It's it's completely unobservable stuff, right? Well, directly directly unobservable stuff, you know? Yes, yes. There's, you know, and that's another thing. When when you talk about space, you know, people don't realize you're not just going to have one. You're not going to have one um, astrophysicist that's going to, to know it all. You're not going to have one astronomer that's going to know it all. That's why they have different titles. There, and, and even in their own individual field, there's so much that that they can't possibly know everything to. So like when you have these, like um, when you have these, when you have these teams of people working to understand something, you know, it's, it's extra trust is really important because you have to get people that you believe are knowledgeable in their field and that are going to know different things than you do. So like, say I make a claim and I'm like, Oh, you know, there's a, you know, there's a, there's a black hole in the center of our, just for example, there is, there's a black hole in the center of, of our solar system. And that's where we get our gravitational pull from, I think. 
And then, you know, but then person, you know, A, we'll say Tony, you know, comes in and they're like, oh, that's right. There also, there's also the great attractor and it's actually pulling our galaxy right into it. I just have to trust what he says because I'm a fucking master of, of my black hole and he's the master of his great attractor. And that sounds horrible. And, <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, you I, I just have to take his word for it because I've spent so much time looking into my theory and and what I've perfected my craft that I, I have to trust what he says is right in order for us to then be like, oh, yeah, so we're working on this thing about gravity, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's that's how it works. Um, you know, of course, in, in greater terms than that, I'm, I'm no expert, um, but yeah, um you know it's a really weird science it really is it's just it's so beyond our comprehension that it's difficult for us to even find an effective way to study it and yeah. um but it's endlessly fascinating i mean it, it really is just you know at the bare minimum i hope that people find an interest to at least sit down and and study your own solar system and and things you know some of the stuff we talked about tonight like you know we talked about saturn and it's little and, and little peggy and little peggy's in in our solar system you know and we talked about um we talked about that uh that star that's you know got it got the mega structure you know that is in our galaxy there's more galaxies outside of our own galaxy there's more it's so right. fucking big and you just can't i mean you really have no i no way of even knowing how big it is there's so much we just have not seen and you know people talk about somebody made the claim that we might i don't remember who it was or where it was but i heard it recently that that we know more about space than we do about the ocean that's just absolutely fucking not true <laughs> yeah people like to people like to throw that one around i don't, right. I, don't I don't know how that could possibly be true either when you talk about just volume right. you know I, mean? I mean there's like a lot once, we don't once, know about the ocean but there's a lot more we don't know about space <laughs> one's finite one's infinite right Just, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah take your pick i mean you know and so that that was just a, a super silly claim but it, but it's a lot and i understand it's not everybody's uh cup of tea but usually a lot most people just know about little things here and there but i mean you're just most of of space science and and uh study are theories because we don't have a choice but to theorize because we can't we really can't prove or disprove and i get most science is um but you know we have the um basic scientific laws but they're they're very basic i mean gosh there's you know what three of them there's not very many <laughs> mm so i don't know i just i i don't know i you, i could talk about this all day um but yeah space is big guys <laughs> there's a lot of it there's a lot of it out there there is a there's a big great attractor out there that's slowly sucking us into its hole sucking our hole into its hole and uh one day we're gonna our holes are gonna meet and it'll be Probably, will scissor. it'll be it'll, it'll be sexy i don't know it'll probably ex be explosive i don't know what's gonna happen but <laughs> yeah. so anyway there you go there's space um but yeah do you have any anything else to add to the uh oh god i th i think you know what i i think you summed it up perfectly great <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, well we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>